welcome home. All right, what's going on, guys? It's Epoxy, and we got the February 2019 progress update for Fallout Miami a couple of days ago, so I figured we would go ahead and run through this thing as it's pretty exciting. I love this mod. It is one of the biggest and most ambitious projects out there, and I I'm super hyped for it. So starting it off in the audio department, because this is one of the most impressive parts of this project. Honestly, the fact that they're able to get tracks of this quality from authors for this mod project is just absolutely insane. And I love all the work that they've gotten done so far. So here is a tease at a nether ambient soundtrack for Fallout Miami called Dreamer's Delight by George M. So again, the soundtrack's name is Dreamer's Delight. It's composed by George M. It's apparently going to haunt players exploring Miami's Maimon region. As the title suggests, this tune is associated with the Dreamers faction animal mask wearing Luna junkies squatting in the pre-war university campus. Dorms, drugs, and delirium. Honestly, not that different to how it was before the bombs. Last month, they also talked about the slavers of Sunshine Cove. This month, they're sharing some of the location's history. And as you can see, we have a very interesting Sunshine Cove paradise in the sun sign that says slaves for sale 1000 caps sales are final so this sign made by trey ram will greet players who decide to visit the slaver citadel before the bombs fell sunshine cove was the sunshine hotel and casino a palace of luxury frequented not only by miami's wealthiest but also by people of prominence from around the world actors musicians fat cats of business of both legitimate and not hotel and casino doesn't just mean rooms and roulette though it would often also imply the involvement of the mob the pearl in miami's oyster is no exception back before the great war the cubanos represented a tight-knit community of cuban elites who has fled the chinese-backed communist revolution in their island home with a combination of dealings both over and under the table, they took an opportunity to make hay where the sun shined and gained a controlling interest in the hotel while helping it reach heights of its popularity and prestige. While the Cubanos partially managed the business directly, they left most of the responsibility in the capable hands of one Mr. Goodman, who made sure everything was running smoothly and ensured that even the hotel's legitimate side made a tidy profit. Then the bombs fell. Although Miami wasn't hit directly, it was still affected by the chaos and riots common during apocalyptic events. While the criminal elements within the Cubanos would make sure that the Cuban-American community in Miami survives the end of the world, Mr. Goodman saw an opportunity to carve out his own slice of the vacation wasteland. After some time, the Sunshine Hotel and Casino came to be known as Sunshine Cove. We'll talk more about it next month. Concept art for Sunshine Cove was drawn by Safara, our 2D art lead. Honestly, the quality from every department for this mod, the concept art, the 2D art, the 3D art, the composers, everything is of the utmost quality and I, I just love seeing it all. But there is a feature that a lot of people enjoy about this mod. It's time to talk about that new gameplay feature. As you know, the Vacation Wasteland place hosts to many different factions, each with its own identity, goals, and relationship to other groups. Fallout Miami will feature a faction reputation system similar to the one seen in Fallout New Vegas. And what that means is that we also need some slick faction icons. Bruno Sathler and James O'Dwyer are responsible for the ones showcased in this monthly update, which belong to the Nuclear Patriots and a faction we haven't yet talked about. So I want to know down in the comment section below, what do you think this faction is? What do you think they entail? I'd love to hear your guys' speculation on that, but moving on. Our version of the faction reputation system will be slightly less involved than the one in New Vegas. While we are committed to making an experience that is as deep and interactive as possible, the smaller size and tighter scope of Fallout Miami means that things won't get as wildly divergent. Don't worry though, your actions will still affect your standing with different factions, opening or closing opportunities, and affecting your own particular ending. Now, for your monthly dose of level design screenshots courtesy of our lead level designer, Star Cornet. Oh, and we have some brand new palm trees made by Star Cornet and Tyler Woods, coolest guy, our 3D asset lead. And boy, does this ever look amazing. And I just want to say those palm trees are of the highest quality 
and I love them. I want to know your thoughts on them down in the comments because I think they're absolutely beautiful. That just about wraps it up for February, but there's one more thing before we say goodbye. Last month, we said we'd be releasing the quad barrel shotgun soon, TM. Well, it's been delayed for a little bit. There are some cakes we still need to work out. We didn't want to leave you high and dry though, so we're showing off this amazing animation work by Maximilian, or also known as Max G 3 d And I'm just going to go ahead and play this and let you see for yourself. And as always, it's of the highest quality and I just cannot wait to see where this project goes. It is looking phenomenal. Each and every progress update gets me more hyped for this. Let me know your thoughts on Follow Miami down in the comment section below. I'd love to see all of your opinions. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please smack that like button down below. Subscribe to join the good fight if you haven't already. And ring that bell icon to stay updated on all of my future videos. It'd be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy. Signing off.